वेलकाम टू माई उकलि मार्केट राउंड आप आई एम सागर नंदी आई यूज टू वार्क इन आई टी आई हेव रिटायर्ड नाउ आई एम सुइंग ट्रेडिंग स्टक्स यूजिंग किऊ सिसटेम्स एंड टेक्निक्स यू मे कन्टेक्ट मी यूजिंग माई इमेल आई डी ट्रेडिंग प्रफिटेबलि एट जिमेल डट कम दिस इज माई यूट्यूब चेनेल ट्रेडिंग प्रफिटेबलि माई टूटार हेन्डल सागर नंदी and my traders forum sakarnanti.com i regularly share live market and stock analysis on these channels they are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only i am not an investment advisor it is not a trade recommendation trading involves risk you and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades in this session i will use q360 degrees analysis to look at oil and coal these two commodities and then i will look at the market sector industries and stocks these are the systems that i use for my trading for technical analysis charting and scanning i use q elite running on trade station and q global q finder running on meta stock for stock fundamental and pr analysis in real time i use q vital for real time sector industry rotation analysis i use q edge and for market and index analysis i use q index that was the last slide of my presentation i'll now continue with the live system i'm beginning my analysis using oil etf uso i'm using q global running on meta stock and for this analysis i'm using the weekly daily at a glance template in the weekly chart after displaying the bullish headwind reversal signal oil went up and now for many weeks it is moving inside a range the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining cyan that is bullish based on the bullish color of the weekly chart i mentioned that i was not going to short oil for last several weeks now if i look at the daily chart i see that price is moving inside an extremely narrow range so narrow range that i am reluctant to take any trade in oil right now i will rather wait for the price to break either to the upside or to the downside and then look for a low risk entry opportunity gold etf gld in the weekly chart it is going up price is supported by the memory support trend line this week's backdrop candle color is bullish cyan the shape is indecisive the body is hollow that is bullish however it has an upper tail that is bearish making the overall candle indecisive in the daily chart price is supported by memory trend line support that is why it is not the time to take any short trade even though there is a headwind possible reversal signal looking at the headwind signal q trader should put trailing stop in any existing long position but there is no need to exit the trade because the price is supported by trend line support after the commodities analysis i'm continuing with the market level analysis using market etfs and futures let me start with a bullish picture that of nasdaq etf qqq it went up strongly this week started with a gap up open and went almost in straight line from there in the daily chart price is going in an uptrend it is supported by memory trend line support it is above the upper boundary line 
that is too extended for me to take a long trade. The last buying opportunity following Q technique could be on this day when it gave a cyan flow candle that is a possible go with flow trend following long signal day. The weekly daily at a glance chart for QQQ is very bullish. Is Nasdaq really so bullish? Let's look at it using Q index. I am analyzing the Nasdaq index dot NDX here that is equivalent to the Nasdaq ETF QQQ. What can you see from here? On Friday 40% of the stocks decline, 60% went up. Over last two days, 59% went up, 39% went down. And over the entire week, five days, 67% went up and 33% went down. This is also a bullish picture, but not as bullish as the QQQ weekly chart would make you believe. It seems that Nasdaq went up, QQQ went up because of some stocks. Which stocks? In Q index, we can drill down to the constituent stocks. Let's do that. First thing to notice is that Nasdaq itself, I mean QQQ, went up by 4.7% in the week. That is a massive gain. Considering the fact that it is at 52 week high, it made a new all time high this week. If Nasdaq is so high, but not so many stocks as a percentage are going up, which stocks are going up? You can double click on the 5 day period column header to sort and double click again to reverse the sort order. I am clicking this icon here, number 10, to look at the 10 best performing stocks of this week. Which are those stocks? These are Tesla, Netflix, Netis, Amazon, DocuSign, Checkpoint, eBay, Nvidia, DXCM and Baidu. If you look at the below 52 week high column, you will see that other than Baidu, a Chinese ADR, all the other stocks are less than 4% below 52 week high. So they were already very strong and they went up the most this week. These are massive gains for stocks near 52 week high and that is what propelled QQQ higher. Under the hood, more stocks went up but not as many as a percentage as one would expect. That is the picture from Nasdaq QQQ. Now I will show you the picture from S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrial Average and Russell 2000. You will see the picture is even weaker from those ETFs. S&P 500 ETF SPY in the weekly chart the backdrop candle color is bullish and shape is also bullish how far price is right below the memory resistance line in the daily price is moving inside a very narrow range and it is also below the memory trend line resistance unless it can break out in either direction it may not be safe to take any directional trade in SPY. SPY is certainly not as bullish as QQQ. It is moving inside a range for the last 5 days and also if you step back a little bit, it is still inside a range 
bound by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA it is weaker than SPY. SPY was weaker than QQQ and DIA is weaker than SPY. Why? Because for the last two weeks its backdrop candle color is neutral. It is not bullish. It has a memory resistance in the weekly chart some distance away. In the daily the memory resistance is very close to Friday's closing price. Taking a step back, it is also moving inside a range bound by memory support and memory resistance lines. Russell 2000 ETF IWM This is even weaker than DIA. The weekly backdrop color is neutral shape is indecisive. Why I said it is weaker than DIA is because it actually declined this week. You can make that out from the activity bar in the weekly chart being in the red color. It came down by a small percentage. All the other three market ETFs went up. However, IWM came down. In the daily chart, it is moving inside a range for several weeks now. Price is bound by memory resistance and watermark support. In the market roundup video several weeks ago, I showed that the market was moving in an up-down, up-down fashion and that is continuing. This is week to week sector performance but this is a picture from two weeks ago. At that time all the sectors were down and in the week prior to that the sectors are mostly bullish. It turned to bearish picture from prior bullish picture. That was two weeks ago. What happened next week? This is the same week to week sector analysis. This is a picture from one week ago. At that time the sectors turned bullish. Most of the sectors went up and in the week before that it was bearish. What happened this week? This week, though QQQ is very bullish, in fact, more sectors went down than went up. Only three sectors went up and eight went down. Therefore, you can say this week also it switched from a bullish picture of one week ago to a bearish picture. I created all these charts from QH, the real-time sector industry analysis tool. And from these charts you can very clearly see that for the past four weeks, these three charts represent data for past four weeks, every week the sectors are reversing. One week up, next week down, next week up again and after that down again. Now I am going to look at the market from a different perspective using Q Finder. In Q Global running on Metastock, I have these two combo scans. They look for all the possible bearish signals. Q finder bearish and all the possible bullish signals. Q finder bullish. I like to run it on a large list of stocks. Here I have a list of liquid stocks with at least five years history that has more than 1500 stocks. 
Usually I run it on the daily time frame to find trade ideas. In this case I run it on the weekly time frame to see what is the balance between Q bullish signals and bearish signals for the whole week. Let's look at that data. This is Q finder tool. Here I have the data from the two combo scans that I ran on Q Global. It has listed all the Q signals under bullish and bearish categories. We have the numbers but I don't like to see the numbers. Q systems are designed to be visual. Let's look at the charts. First thing I look at is the pie charts. If we look at the symbols then for the week 47% are bearish in terms of Q signals, 53% are bullish and if we count the number of signals sometimes a symbol may have multiple signals. If we count the number of individual signals 45% are bearish, 55% are bullish. That tends to say that bullish picture is stronger. However, if we look at the individual signals, we find out the reason. The reason is a very large number of bullish gaps. If we exclude that, then the picture is actually more bearish. If we look at the trend continuation signals, then it is overall more bearish than bullish. The red bars are bigger than the green bars. And if you look at the trend reversal signals, again, overall it is more bearish than bullish. Q finder run on the weekly interval is showing that the market is balanced or maybe slightly more bearish than bullish. Let's take a final look at the market using Q edge. We already saw that over 5 day period, 3 sectors are up and 8 are down. Over 2 day period, 6 are up, 5 are down. And over 1 day, on Friday, all the sectors are up. That is showing that though the weekly is overall bearish on Friday, it had a bullish day. That is also shown by the pie charts on Friday. 100% of the sectors went up. 91% of all the industries went up and 81% of all the stocks went up. Friday was very bullish but that may not be enough reason to start to take long trades because I showed from the market level analysis that most of the ETFs are moving sideways. Now let's carry out a top down analysis to look at the sectors, industries and stocks further. I'm clicking this sector icon from the home page that will take me to the sector scorecard. The real time column is blank now. It will fill up during market hours. In this sector scorecard, we can see the sector scores across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days, 1 day and then using real time. Cyan color represents strength and magenta represents weakness. You can double click any column header to sort by that column. Let's sort it by one day performance. One thing that comes to notice is that information technology is the worst performing sector on Friday. However, it was one of the best performers earlier. And isn't it interesting that though QQQ is very strong, 
as a sector information technology is the weakest and it is also the most decelerating sector deceleration acceleration are shown by the paste columns magenta color represents deceleration therefore something that you might not guess from looking at QQQ we can see here that infotech is the worst performing sector and most decelerating sector a time to be careful about long positions in this sector maybe you could book profit in some of those stocks or even look for shorting opportunities can we find any shorting opportunity we may not take them why we may not take them is because the market has not turned down yet but if the market starts to go down we may find some very lucrative shorting opportunities from infotech stocks that are at a very high price level let's find them out at least one of them using the top-down analysis from here I'm going to click on the cog icon to look at the infotech industries it will show the industry scorecard and it will show me only the infotech industries again I'm going to sort by one day performance and I'm going to focus only on the worst performing industries their scores are in magenta color now I am going to click the PR icon the family icon to look at all the underlying stocks in this weak industries I have all these stocks fundamental scorecard using cube vital cube vital fundamental statistics because infotech was very strong for a while I expect the stocks majority of the stocks also to be at a high price level they may be fundamentally overvalued I'm going to click on this red battery icon to look for the overvalued stocks in terms of fundamentals not in terms of price movement on charts but based on actual fundamentals these are the overvalued stocks now I'm going to double click on the latest quarter earnings growth let me double click again to reverse the sort order and now I can see that several of these overvalued stocks are also having negative earnings growth these are what I call attractive star shorting opportunities in terms of fundamentals now the last step would be to look at their technical charts let me pick one of the stocks LPSN why am I selecting it because let me highlight it is overvalued and it is having negative earnings growth not only in the latest quarter but for all the three previous quarters and also in the last yearly period earnings quality is also poor shown by the earnings quality score let me analyze it using Q charts now this is LPSN and for analyzing LPSN I am using Q Elite running on trace station I am using the same weekly daily at a glance template firstly you can see from the band indicator price extreme or pendulum band indicator that the stock is at a very high price level in the weekly chart it came to this watermark resistance level and price drop it also displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal this week's candle color is neutral shape is bearish in the daily on Thursday it gave a bear release signal because price was reversing from the watermark resistance level Thursday's bear release signal also gave us a Q box short trade setup if you took that short setup you are already in a profit on Friday the traffic light candle color turned bearish the stock looks like getting ready to go down further 
at least up to the memory support line. Remember Friday QQQ went up strongly however LPSN came down and the traffic light candle color turned red showing that this stock is weaker than other tech stocks certainly weaker than QQQ and it is fundamentally overvalued it is in an industry that is very weak and the sector is also very weak this is an example of a top-down analysis and also the Q360 degrees technique where you use top-down analysis to align all the forces in favor of your trade. Even if you don't short the stock right now, you could short it on Thursday itself. If you don't short it now, at least if you are holding a long position, looking at the weekly headwind, looking at the weakness of the industry and the stock's fundamentals you may apply trailing stop in any existing long position you may put that stop just below this memory support line time to make a call on my market outlook and preferred trading direction this week QQQ went up strongly but there are contradicting signals QQQ is supposed to represent tech stocks however from QH sector analysis we are seeing information technology is the worst performing sector on Friday also using Q index when we look at the constituent stocks of QQQ or the Nasdaq index NDX we see that not so many stocks as a percentage went up as one would expect by looking at QQQ weekly chart therefore QQQ went up massively you may say it made a new all-time high however looking under the hood it is giving mixed signals what about the other market ETFs SPY, DIA and IWM all are moving sideways they are neither going up nor going down IWM declined a little bit this way when we look at the Q signals over the one week period using Q finder we see that again bullish signals and bearish signals are balanced probably slightly more on the bearish side that is leading me to keep my market outlook as neutral and because the market ETFs are moving sideways except QQQ but again tech stocks are giving me signals I am not having any preferred trading direction I will wait and see how the market moves next week and then decide on my trading direction that is all that I plan to share in today's session I will continue to post live stock and market analysis on my Twitter page and also the Traders Forum. You may keep an eye on them. Thanks a lot for attending my session. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.